this is gonna work you are live thank you very much hello G'day, how you going? Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. How are we all doing out there? I thought I'd go live this morning and um, get a video up for you beginners to look at. Something very easy. Uh, open a new tab, there we go. Uh, and achievable in acrylic paints. I'll put these gloves on after I've done this. So I just need to get myself up on there so I can read your comments live. All right, so bear with me a moment. And um, I've got to get the volumes down, which is great. Okay, let me just get that across to there. And yes, I could see, there we go. G'day, Marilyn Lynch. Now I can see who's there. Good stuff. Now I'll bring my picture back up. So let's go back to this screen here and bring up my reference picture. It's something I've designed on my iPad there, it's, a, it's like a mountain scene, but I've done like two mountains and just the top of them are covered in snow. And you can have either the bright colored sunset setting down or you can have that as a starlit night in that part of the sky. But I like little facets in this and the way I've just got the little crested moon up in the top corner there. But if you're watching the replay, this will all be, um, the descriptions will be in the link below, but at the moment for the live, they're not, okay. So who have we got there? Deborah, Mary Lou, Mary Louise Kitchen, g'day Mary Louise, Zeribel, Martino, g'day, Mimi, hello Mimi, Di Gavin, uh, Marilyn Lynch, and Random Things with Jacob. How are we all going? All right, I've got my waters and all that set up and I'm pretty much gonna um, use the colors as I go. All right, so uh, Paul Wren, sold my first painting today, one of your tutorials, good stuff. There is a bit of confusion I'm, I picked up on. In my edited YouTube videos, I have a notice there um, that saying that this is my video and do not copy or duplicate it. What that means is do not copy and duplicate or download the video file from YouTube and then post it as your video. The subject, the art matter, matter and the tutorial, you're more than welcome to copy that and do your rendition of the tutorial. But it's just a notice to say do not copy the actual video file, all right? So I just thought I'll get that out there to those people. Um, Mickey, Mike, how are we all? All right, so let's get over here. I'm just going to use a little canvas panel here today, and I wanted some appropriate brushes. Uh, I want this one. I'm looking at my um, reference picture there. Uh, what else do I want? Probably a smaller one. Uh, well, we're going to do a sky as well, so we'll get that for the sky. What happened there? Oh, a bit of paint stuck the brush to the pen. So that'll be for the sky. And we'll get some colors there for the sky. So we want phalo blue for the sky. Uh, we'll put that one there, all the way over here for the sky. Don't need that much, but I've got that much. Okay, and I'll put in the link, oh no, I'll put the colors that I've used in this painting in the description below for the replay as well. I need this and that. So I'm going to first set up everything for the sky. So I'm using my craft paint. It's a soft bodied paint, acrylic. And I want to get that mixed with retarder, which is a slow drying medium that makes the paint stay wet longer. All right, so I will just, where are you? You can see there for the time being. We'll get this incorporate it together, all in my putter on or a brush. I'll bring you in in a minute, don't worry, I'm just gonna, you can see from there. Um, yeah, we'll do the sky half for now, just the sky half. So I'll get this on there, just so as we can get a beautiful blend within our sky, okay? I'm just thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Should I do the whole lot? Um, bum bum bum. Now nah, I'll just 
painted as I go. It's acrylic, it's not oil, so I've got to remember that. All right, this is the craft paint painted on there with the retarder, ready to get our sky colours happening, all right? So I'll bring you over now. And I've got to keep looking at the monitor so as we make sure we do not forget to move the camera. Now I want to get some sky colours. So we've got our Indian yellow. Where else are we? Uh, we want a red. I'm going to use quinacridone magenta. Okay, because it's a bit darker in the evening. It's So we'll use that one there. And what else do we want? We've got the phalo blue. Okie dokie. So let's get that into the sky there. So I'm going to use this brush here. Save me washing that big one all the time. Indian yellow. Uh, where have I got? I'm looking at my thing, so I want this about there. I'm just going to go from here. See, there's... Get that there. I'm going to wipe it. Because the brush, look how much paint's in that brush. Okay, I'll wipe it. And the top of that, I'll fade out. There we go. Now I'm going to just rinse that brush in the water there, wipe it and dry it a bit, picking up the quinacridone magenta. Well, let's hope I could have used this colour and bring that across to there. Bring that up to there. Massaging it in. Now I'm going to wipe the brush. I'll try and see some of your comments when I can at the moment. I can't. Ian, what part of Australia uh, you, as I am going to Sydney in two weeks? I was born in Sydney, poor Ren, but I live in Perth, Western Australia, on the other side there. So now I want to bring this down into the yellow. Maybe bring some of the yellow up into the red. Wipe the brush. There we go, okay. And massage it nice and artistically. Now I'm gonna wipe that brush again, wash it, rinse it, dry it on a cloth. And now I'm going to pick up some of the phalo blue on the same brush. When I'm going live, I've got to try and work out a brush behavior so as I'm not doing too much washing and going to the sink. So now we'll get this right against the quinacridone there. Yeah. And paint the top of that sky. Get it reasonably dark up there, Ian. There we go. Now, I wanna, now what I'm doing, I feel I can massage this blue into that white craft paint that I put on there in the beginning. It's great. It's giving a foundation, a primer. It gives, see the, the colours. It's, it's laid a foundation for those colours to stand out. Now I'm going to wipe the brush so as I can bring that blue into that quinacridone magenta. So crisscross it down into there. Bring some of the magenta into that. It doesn't matter. We're just blending those. Wipe it up here. And let's carefully get that. Now this is just going to be a simple one for a beginner to learn. So I'm not going to get too technical with it. All right, look at that. So we've just got the colours. And you virtually end up with your yellow, your orange, your purple and your blue when you do it this way. Okay, so I'm just going to wash that brush, rinse it. So I'm pretty proud of that. I've just used the one brush, my applicator and that one. Now what I want to do is grab some, where are we? Back there, you. Let's have a look at my mess down here. Wow, there's a lot of long questions there. I've learnt 
to blend very well because of you, but I still can't get the colors nice. It just takes a lot of practice there, Terry. Uh, just wondering, do you have a website somewhere we can get heads up on when you can do tutorials alongside of you lot? I just have my art group page there, Jad Actor one, but um, sometimes I'm not full time at it. So I, if I was a more of a full time, I'd have a schedule, but I don't have a schedule. I just take opportunity of my free time as it is, and then I pop up live. So, but I'll try and, where I can just put a notice up saying, look, I'm going live in 10 minutes or whatever. Okay, so now down here, I hope you can see that. I'm um, gonna get some clouds happening. So I've got my simple cloud recipe, my titanium white and a brush to put it on with. I normally use fan brushes, okay? And we want a brush to blend them. So these would be my blending brush, just something like that that's nice and soft. A lot of people are using makeup brushes, which is great. Uh, I'll try and get through some more questions here. Oh, Ian, are you usually on live Thursday mornings? I'm in Brisbane, love your sh Put her on a brush. <laughs> Thank you very much, Di. Um, no, I'm just on whenever I can find the spare time as I work for myself doing roof repairs. Uh, Angela Young isn't on YouTube, can follow Ian. Hello, Angela Young. Thank you very much. If you can... Um, uh, Angela Young, just when Ian is available, hit the notification bell. Yes, hang on, I'll pull back a bit, because um, I've got to do something as well. So where are we? Yeah, I've got to do it before that dries. Um, oh no, it's all right, I'll do it later. I was just gonna share it onto the page, but that's fine. Um, I come on when I have the opportunity, okay? I wasn't gonna work, I think it was yesterday, but I did. What's today, Thursday, no, Tuesday, but I did. Wednesday, I filmed a tutorial, but that's gotta be edited up, uh, so that won't be out for a while. And today, I've got some time, and I thought, well, there's an hour, hour and a half, two max, I won't go live for more than two hours, but um, I can go live, so I'm live now, so that's what happens. Okay, so get back over here. And we'll, before that paint dries on my canvas, and you know what? I'm just looking at it, and oh, I'm just gonna put a little bit of black in with that, because that sky looks a bit loud. I wanted, you know, I'm after a night sky. Where'd I put that brush? So, get out of there, you dry piece of paint. I want some darker blue. There we go. Just mix it up. And we'll get something dark up here. Just a bit dark. Something we can radiate down as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like that. Do, 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 boom, boom. Get the brush and paint in there on the canvas and make it go boom, boom, yeah. All right. <coughs> Now, I want to blend that together. But see, it's still wet, it's lovely, it's great. There we go, simple, effective painting for a beginner. It'll look a bit more beyond just a basic, but it's, it's a basic way to do it, but you'll get that look. All right, so I'm so excited to learn what you do. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, G'day, Grey Scales to my Facebook and art page group. Thank you very much, Anne Young. She just shared it to my art group page. Uh, if you're not a member of my art group page, there will be a link in the description below. Uh, you can join there. And instead of trying to bombard me with your painting saying, Ian, what do you think of this? My art group page is a platform where you can do all that. And there's also a lot of other lovely people there that can help you out. Now, I'm going to have them in. I might do... So we'll get something about here. So let's put some clouds on, okay? They don't have to be too big. So we just, now all this paint there is wet, okay? And it's gonna pick up the um, sunsetty, vibrantly colors there. So we're going to blend. And let's grab uh, me paper towel roll there because uh, you need to keep rubbing and wiping. 
Ah, Joe is asking, how do you buy your blending brushes? I don't have them anymore. Sorry, that was a while ago. I was able to source some and the people that where I was getting them from no longer supply them. So unfortunately, I don't have anything to supply you with anymore. But it was a good thing while it lasted, but sorry about that. Okay, I've got one simple cloud there. Where are we? You know what? Because this is a small canvas, and I'll zoom in a bit. There we go, just so you can see what's happening with these clouds there. Um, we've still got the same colour. Uh, where else are we? I want something maybe here. So I'm virtually joining the orange and the blue together now. So we're getting a cloud, making the orange and the blue. Don't forget I'm having a mountain there. So let's not get too carried away. And while I'm stamping this on, in my mind I'm making the body and shape of that cloud but also bringing some different colours. So when I blend it, it's going to look bloody marvellous, all right? Nothing wrong with having a painting that looks bloody marvellous. I'm going to give it a bit of a bottom. There we go. But I want the bottom a bit light. It's not so bright. Let's see if I can drag some of that orange into it. Uh, now I've lost the bottom. I've gone and made poop. But that doesn't matter. The mountain's going to cover that corner. And, yeah, I've got some colours there. Beautiful. Missed it up. And I'll just tickle that sharp topness there. Just so it's not too... Oh, yeah, I'm liking that. I want to wisp that long ways. Now I've got to wash me putter on a brush, me fan brush. That's looking all right. I'm looking at the monitor, keeping an eye on the monitor. Let's see. Paul Wren, thank you very much, Paul Wren. Paul Wren has just made a donation. Those of you who don't now know, I have Super Chat enabled. It allows people who love my work to support my content by hitting the Super Chat grey dollar sign down below. And it supports me in a great way. Okay, now we've got the rest of the sky, so we'll just put some whispery, there's some there, maybe up here. Look at that, beautiful. It's wet and it's gonna work great. I'm just sort of doing bits and pieces. Maybe a bit, oh, she, I shouldn't have done that, you idiot. Not to worry, not to worry, the mountain's gonna go there. Let's turn this lovely gap-filling clouds, look at that into the purple, isn't that beautiful? Into some gap filler, wisp, misty, distant stuff in the sky. Give it turmoil, twist that brush, act like you're an artist. Oh, and you, now, I want to give that a bit of thickness and yep, there we go. This one here, let's do the same here. As you're blending, sometimes you see a cloud forming that you weren't prepared to create in your head and take advantage of that if that happens. You know, when I've got the door open because it's such a warm day, and I don't know if you just heard that blow fly. He was in here the other day when I was filming the other day for the tutorial. And I'm like, oh, that's annoying. I can't stand the sound of blow flies. Let's see if this cloud's going to be all right or I shouldn't have bought that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're going to have a mountain there anyway. I'm picking up the little fan brush that I've got, just because see some of these clouds here, I want some, just something there, I'm looking where can I feel it, about there, get a crest on there, like, like the yumminess I normally put in there. I'll get rid of some of that as well, just in case you're going to see it. Oh, let's hope I didn't bring any blue into there. I'm just putting some yumminess into these clouds. That's it. Don't overdo it. And I want to soften that down, but leaving the loudness there. Look at that. Yay, said Ray. Look in the monitor. That's working, and I'll just... <laughs> See if I can brighten this silly billy up over here that I did. <laughs> All right, that's pretty much done. I'll put those fan brushes in that tub of water for now. So I'll zoom out. Oh yeah, you can all see that. Where are we? Uh, let me see if I can, practicing is the key, Angela Young. Yes, it is. 
The accident cloud looks good. Yeah, sometimes they look good. Depends on the person. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Ian. It's great. Michelle from Eden, New South Wales. Welcome along, Michelle. Uh, Karen McHenry. Agree with Ian. Some clouds are different than others. Yes. Love your skies tonight. Gorgeous. Thank you very much, Christine Smith. All righty. Now, I just want to put a little moon in the sky. Just something like I've done on my, I'll show it to you, you haven't seen it yet. This is the actual thumbnail until I edit it, but that's what I did on my um, iPad there. And see that little moon there? I just want him in there, because he's a, he's only a little thing, but he's gonna be a champion piece in this painting, I feel okay. All right, so let's zoom back out of there. Put this back there onto the painting and stop running the ca cable over, Ian. Oh, yeah. Now I'm gonna have to zoom in a bit, it's very, there we go. Now let's get some, where are we about? It's a bit of a bent. All right, so let's grab some white on my, too much. All right, and I want him about here. How's that looking? Doesn't look round in the camera, but it is round on the in real life. My goodness, that's a weird one. What I'm going to do is grab, let's say, my little filbert brush here. Where, where's the camera? Little filbert brush. And I'm gonna use this to manipulate it just the way I want. Take your time when you're doing a painting if you're a beginner. Just remember there's no rush. Um, I wanna bring that, keeping it round. And I'm virtually fading the perfectly round moon that I put on there into a crest if I can. There we go. Like I said, there's no rush. How's that looking in the camera? Good. Let's give you a front on there, see what it looks like. Moon. I'll get some white, the titanium white. Gee, I'm making such a lot of sauce for little spaghetti here with this moon. I want one side of it bright. And I'll fade it into the body of the moon. There we go. Just something simple but effective. I feel I don't like that little bit there, so I'm picking up that sky colour, and let's hope the brush ain't too wet, because if it is, it's going to wash. And just pull that. That'll do. That will do it, let's not play with it too much. All right, we've done that, now I can dry it. Ready for... The mountain, so while I do that, I can acknowledge some of you people there. What have we got there? I hope you can hear me, uh, some clouds, love this. Michelle, Michelle de Brognos, thank you very much for your donation. Much appreciated there. Got a bit of hair on me, I'll take that off. I'll get, while I'm drying this, is so I can put me mountain on. Yeah, tuck it. Yeah. So the mountain's going to come here, down, and up there like that. So I'm, I'm rub, why I'm rubbing this is 
feeling how dry it is for me to do it. Because sometimes, I didn't want to come down too far because sometimes with this retarded paint and then you dry it and you've got to paint over it, it's like having a soft foundation and you can rip it through what you're trying to paint. I've learnt that by mistakes. So, uh, what have we got here? We've got... Um, Yes, I've read that, I've read that. Okay, we're caught up to everything. Now, we want some typical mountain colours. Um, I stick with colours that I know I've used before and work out for me. So I'm going to go with my typical burnt umber. So I'll get all this on the palette here for you. Some burnt umber. Uh, I do like my yellow oxide. So let's find some yellow oxide. Here we go. Or yellow ochre. I call it oxide ochre. Either or either. Yeah, we've got white there as well already. Um, thank you very much, Joanne Collis. Appreciating my work. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Karen McHenry. No, no, no. Once the painting's dry, it's in the process of painting there, uh, Karen McHenry. It's I've noticed that happening. So I don't need... To retard or blend anything here so I'm going to stop bringing that down here because I'm going to paint over it and when I paint over it even though I've dried it it can get a bit rubbery but if the painting's been done for a while and then you're going back to it the next day it's fine but just in the process of painting it hopefully you understood that um, Roxanne hi I love the way you you treat is that treat or teach? It should be teach. I love the way you treat. I watch you all the time and I love that I could tell you this. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Roxanne Wettering. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, we've got, I better get some more titanium white because we're going to need some for lightening up the yellow oxide, uh, lightening up some of the burnt umber, um, and some for the snow. So we've got some snow there, and I want to add a bit of blue into the snow with white, so I'll put a bit there for that as well. So you can see what I've done on my palette there like that. I uh, will just, because it's all retarder, I'll give it a bit of a miss so it won't skin up, but it's a beautiful day here. Um, now we're getting ready for the bottom half, which is mountains. I'm going to do the mountains and then, um, you know what, I might as well do it while I'm here, um, is the greenery. What have we got here? This is, uh, I'm not used to these liquid text. Where's the greenery? Where's the greenery? Here we go, forest green. I'm grabbing forest green as well, so I'll put that one about there, about that much, yay. And what else? Some yellow green. I had that yesterday here at note, and that's the flowing one. Here's the structured one. So I'm getting some yellow green as well. Okie dokie, yellow green there. How long have we been going for? 27 minutes, not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, okay, we're caught up to everything there, thank you very much. All right, so I'm gonna use this flat brush I don't know what size it is. I just bought a pack from the art shop. And I want to um, get, so I want to virtually map it in with the burnt umber, my darker color. And we want it a bit inky so as it'll spread onto the canvas. Now I've got a twin mountain in my reference picture that I designed on my iPad. Uh, whether it stays exactly the same, I don't know. But I better bring you over here now. So as you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm not going to need that anymore, so just let me wash it. That should be the only time I need to go to the sink. I'll just get the little bits of mess off that brush. You know, it's funny. I saw a post on Facebook, you know, women are always complaining that men leave the toilet seat up, uh, which is fair enough. And um, then someone's gone and posted a photo, and my girlfriend's guilty of this. The bathroom was full of makeup brushes and just all girl stuff all around the bench. You couldn't move in there. And 
it showed that picture with, yeah, and you want us to keep the toilet seat down, of virtually saying, well, clean up your sink mess around the makeup, your makeup mess around the sink. But yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to bring, where's that other mountain? I want this mountain peak to be about, there's my centre there. So I want it about, so we'll, we'll, we'll dot it in, we'll dot it in, just so you get an idea. Uh, how high do we want to go? Maybe there. Don't think about it, just do it. There, all right. And this one, pretty much there, that'll do. How's that? And I want the top quite pointy because in the picture that I designed, I want to tell you and show you a simple method to get a mountain to look like a mountain. Sometimes you, you hope for the best. I remember I did when I was learning to paint. And I'm going to show you a simple thing to do with mountains. So you just put your shape up there. This is a pretty much a twin. Now that yellow is a bit too much, so I'm going to fill that in a bit. Alrighty, now let's get some paint, some water, and some horsepower onto that brush and get this right in there now. Just block it in. Not too much water though, because you can see it'll go opaque on you. You don't want it to go too opaque. Now I've got to remember we're painting live here, so I'm not editing it out, so I've got to remember to paint for this live show. So I can virtually pretty much come down there. That's pretty much me mountains to a degree. See now, this is, see where I'm painting this on? This is where I was talking about the retarder underneath it. It's great. A bit up here, it's got it there. So you can see what happens there when you push. See what it's doing? It's digging it up. It's digging it up. So that's why I like to separate where I'm putting my retarded surface and the unretarded paint, okay? It's just something I learnt and I'd rather tell you all about it as well in case you do the same mistake. All right, let's, okay, done. Now with my mountains in acrylic, I like to dry them as we go, every layer. So there's the blocking in layer. Got to dry that so as we can get the next bit on. Now it doesn't have to be dry 100%. You can be a little bit tacky so you can rub stuff into it. And what I want to do is pick up the yellow oxide for the lighter side. I'm an idiot. I was going to have one mountain taller than the other. Doesn't matter. All right, that's dry enough. Now what I want to show you, first I'll wash this brush. What I want to show you with a simple method with mountains. Let's get the lighter colour. So we've got our yellow oxide here. Let's grab a bit of that burn umber. You don't want it too bright. You don't want it too stark of a bright and dark. Something like that's good enough. Now, where's my pun? Uh, would a pencil show up on that? I'm just looking. Yes. Now I'm going to zoom in for this so you can see. I always do this when I'm doing a mountain. And you'll see what I mean. See the peaks. Get at the top. And if anything, you can do it when you're brushing your other lighter colours on, or if you're drawing it, whatever, whatever. From the peak, you pretty much draw a, a squiggly line, just like that. Just any old way, don't think about it. Like that, see? And then bits come all, oh, you can't see that there. Bits come off it, and you pretty much got your fold and the layout of your mountain, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to do that with the lighter colour as I'm incorporating that onto the canvas there. So I've got the lighter colour here. Uh, we want to go pretty much this side of it, so not light enough. I'm just mixing more into the 
paint on the palette there just to get it a bit lighter. So if anything, that's my zigzaggy line. You got me? Pick up some more. Oh, I went a bit overboard with that um, demonstration. I really scratched the living buggery out of me paint, eh? So this is pretty much the lighter side of the mountain. Okay, good night there, Michelle. She's got to go to sleep, that's fair enough. Always watch the replay. So I'm going to stab that in to where that zigzag line is. Don't want it too big there, that'll do. Get that down there. How's that looking? Yep, yeah, I'm just looking in the monitor there. I could see some bits here. Need fixing up. Just covering that white line that I scratched in. Same on this side. That's why I dried that burnt umber colour, the base colour, because it can it's still doing a little bit, mudding up a bit. Okay. But you can see what I am meant by doing those, I'll scrumble all this in the valley part here, um, putting those zigzags in. Practice mountain zigzagging, it's great. Now see here, I'm just dancing some of this in. I'm picking up some of the dark colour on the same brush. I'm going to scrumble it just so we've got some sort of valley momentum there. No, I do not, Renee. Um, like I said, when I've got free time, I'll take advantage of it because I work doing roof repairs during the week as my normal job. And when I've got free time, I'll just come live. Like I said before, if I was a full-time YouTuber, we could set out schedules and things like that. But I'm not full-time, so I just have to take advantage of the times that come. Now, we want some darker colour with some light. So remember I put the bits of white down there. I'm getting some of the lighter colour with that now. Oh, not too light though. Just enough. I should have washed that yellow oxide out of there. Just enough to find the... I'm going to use a smaller brush because that is way too big. I've got my smaller fan brush there, which I deliberately put aside for this. So why don't I use it? I'm using it now. So I'm mixing up that burn umber and some white. And this is where you get the opposite side of those ridges down like that. Just like that. See there, we got too much there. I've got to pick up the burned umber and um, fill it back because it's too bright there. So forgive me, I'll just put that on the board there like that. Pick up some burnt umber and get him back in there. There we go. And then you can, you know, bleed it. Look at that. Get it looking like nature. We'll do the same on the other side now. Get it a bit brighter there. So we're pulling these valleys and ridges down from there. It's just a simple, effective way to make a simple mountain. How's it looking? See, when I zoom back, you'll see what I mean. Now, don't forget, hang on, some of this is looking a bit... There we go. 
um, darken it, lighten it, work out where you need everything. Don't forget where, where oh, that's what you need the, the black. I've put the black on the board there. I'm going to get the slightest bit of black. Make sure your brush is dry, not too wet. Because you want it a bit, you want some very dark pockets in there. So you, you take time. This is where you, you know what? I had a coffee, I've made it, and I didn't bring it in. See, like I said, you've got to dry each part. When I got set up, I made a coffee and it's sitting in the kitchen now. I didn't even... I'll quickly put this dark bit on there. So I picked up the black. And you want some... darks right on this ridge, right in that pocket there. And then you can sharpen them up with the um, lighter colour again. How we go on there? This brush isn't the best, it's got all broken hairs on it. Right, I've got to, I, I'm annoyed that I left me coffee. So this is the dark side of the mountain. So let's go and grab my coffee, eh? let's go for a walk. You want to come for a walk? I'm going to go from my studio. Go into me house there, and I'll grab me coffee. <laughs> yeah, I was like, something's missing. How yeah, dare you forget your coffee, eh? What have we got there? I'm not going to be able to... How many colours do you keep on hand? How long do they stay good for? Karen, how many colours do you keep on hand? Well, I've got quite a few on my easel. I'll show you when I come back. Coffee. I'm annoyed that I've left me coffee. So let's go out here. This is me going. I'll zoom out. You get to. There's, a, there's cats somewhere. There should be some cats somewhere. Don't know. This is me garden. Sorry, there's, it's a bit sunny. Little garden. There's the studio. See that pipe over there? That white pipe. That's when I wash brushes out the sink, the water comes out there and I collect up any gunk, not that much gunk comes out of it. Oh, there's my carport, my work vehicle. Now, there's my coffee over there. Look at it, oh, it's a mess. Garlic bread and pizza from last night. Here it is, look at the poor sod. Let's hope he's still all right. Ah, now we'll go back and finish our painting. So, hang on, oh, I've got a camera in one hand and a coffee in the other. Uh, okay, let's go back. Oh, lost me coffee, eh? I knew something was missing. All right, let's get back. Plugging in the mic, whether you can hear me or not, I'm not 100% sure. <coughs> okay. Oh, there's nothing worse when you tread on the lead and you lift it up and it yanks it out of you. We've got our coffee. What a drama that was, eh? Get back there. <laughs> now, where are we? How's me painting looking? All right, we're ready to put some... Uh, so wash that brush. We're ready to put some snow on there. Before I do, like... Give yourself the opportunity to go backwards and forwards, fine tune things, all right? Like, see here, um, oh, wrong colour paint. I want the um, yellow ochre for that, not that. Give yourself the opportunity to fine tune things. So now, so I put that black back in there before I went and got my coffee. So now you want to get these ridges back. Scooting down the mountain. Come in front of there, whatever 
or something like that. Let's zoom in a bit so you can move around the camera. Um, get some more here. We're going to have snow at the top, so that's fine. Get laces of it dribbling down. Follow the lay of your mountain as well. And we're going to have some green fields in here as well. Because I always draw mine with, um, well not draw, paint with the um, grass and rockery growing up the, the hill, the mountain. Where are we? We might need a little bit of white now. Where are... There's painting. No, it's not my. I just do this in my spare time. But I'm planning, well that's too bright, I'm planning to make it my main source of income. So I want to get some of this dribbling up now. This is where the green will come into it. Uh, but yeah, at the moment I, I repair roofs and that's my main source of income. It's not full time. And the spare time I have, I come and do some tutorials or I go live and do a painting. I try and do my Friday night lives for me Q&A when I can. Okay, we've got that happening there. That's going to pretty much ready for the next bit. Don't worry about this bottom bit. It looks a bit iffity-effity at the moment, but it'll pull together once we put the other stuff in front of it. Now I'm going to wash that brush. and just put our simple snow on there. So for the snow, I've got the white, I've got some of the blue, not too much blue. And we wanna, we wanna just tease this to a different color white. Now our sun is pretty much in the middle. So our bright source is gonna be in the middle. So we come back to the mountain. Do, 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 do. Uh, so this is the dark side of the eye. So we're just going to and let it break. Pretty much. Oh, see how it's going. I want to get some of that off the brush there. I want it broken. There we go. And we'll do the same on this side here. I'm just doing the very peaks. Oh, I didn't dry it. I should have dried it, but I think I'm, it's all right. Now we're following that peak with this color. That's simple. This is just the snow on the top. Now I want to wash that brush, same brush, get all that yuckiness out of there and pick up the titanium white see here what i'm doing picking up the titanium white i want to leave some titanium white now i want to just take that the littlest bit so it's i never like me white to be pure white just in case you've got to put a glare of pure pure white on it so that's going to look pure white, but it's tainted. You can see the two differences. It's tainted with some of that lighter colour. And that'll help you if you need to put the right amount of sparkle there. Now we want to just let it break up. The oil guys use brushes. We can, I mean, they use knives. We can use our brushes for this. Okay, and we're going to bleed that, get it scrambled into that blue a bit and just try and get it down appropriately there coming down the mountain let me have a look in the monitor that's looking all right so you can see this ridge now that zigzag that i did before that gives you the illusion the mountain's coming at you it's just not a flat thing on the side of your painting 
All right, now we're going to do the same here. So nice and sharp at the edge and then let it break up on the way down the mountain. Follow that ridge line. I'll get over there and read some comments in a minute. And like I said, if you're watching the replay, check out the links in the description below. Become a member of my Facebook page. There's a link to just show you exactly how many videos I have in my YouTube library. There's over 280 video tutorials there, so many different subjects. There's a patron if you want to be a patron of mine, support me on there. Now we, get to, we can probably dribble some down there, just like there, getting a bit creative. I wonder if I did that right or wrong, I don't know. Oh well, someone's bound to tell me in the comments, aren't they? And we'll get some more of this. I'm just detailing all this now, virtually, the um, different coloured snows. I find I've got more control with a brush if I was to use a knife rather than using a knife. But if you're comfortable using a knife, go for it. Don't just assume if someone showed you one way, that's the way it's got to be done. All right, that'll do. Let's not muck with that too much. So we've pretty much got our snow-capped mountain peaks there, twin mountain peaks. But I've been going for 50 minutes. All right, we've just got the front to do. Hello, Carol Polson. You're late, that doesn't matter. Mary Smith, doesn't matter if you're late. Karen McHenry, Ian, where is the light source in this painting? It's right there in the middle, okay? Um, if anything, it's pretty much in the middle. So I've gone and made the brighter sides there and the shadow sides there, but I've mucked up with the mountain, but such is life. Don't crucify me for, I'm confused. That's why you did the blue on the right and left. Yeah, well, if you don't like it this way, you do them both on the left or both on the right. But there we go. I can change it if I get a bit paranoid about it. I can change it. Now those greens that I put down there, I'm going to grab the bigger flat brush that I had. And I'm going to pick up the forest green. Forest green. Uh, hang on a minute. Before I do that, I better whack the water in so we've got something to paint too. So what have we got? We've got phalo, phalo blue. I'm going to use just this colour here for the water. I'll get it very wet a bit. Get some more water in there, get some of this. We'll just get the water in there. I forgot all about it. <clears throat> We're going to have um, different amounts of land out there as well. So I'll get this on there for now. Now this is an evening, obviously. The sun's setting, the moon's up in the sky. We're not going to have a daytime bright reflection of the mountains in this water. Now we've got that. I'm going to pick up some dark, just trace in there like that. I'm going to wipe it off the brush and I want to pull them through that paint before it dries. This is just raw paint. It's got no retarder in it. Get in there. That'll do. Get that up there a bit closer. Now we can grab some of the white. We got a some hint of the moon's reflection in the water there. Yeah, if it can if it can stay there. I'll try that again. I'll just come from the middle there. Oh, the paint's very wet. Okay. Mm. 
That'll do it. Got some sort of hint of the moon's reflection there. It's only a small moon anyway. Now, um, I'll dry that. Now I want to bring up the land to the mountain and that's it. So we'll dry this off. All right, come on, right there. See, now the greens are going to trace into this colour that I've got there, and it'll marry these two areas together. That's what was in my head. If you watch my tutorials all the way through, if you're going to copy them, if you're going to do a rendition of them, it pays for you to do that so you know what's in your head then. Yeah, I worked hard for me coffee, eh? Look at that. And I'm enjoying it. It's, it's lukewarm. It's just under lukewarm. Oh, yeah. Anyway, let's stop scoffing the coffee. Now, down here, what are we going to do? We've got... Let's zoom back out again. Uh, let's grab some brushes and get the land mass there. So we're going to start with the bank which is my yellow oxide and this colour here. I want it a bit brighter than the plain yellow or yellow ochre, whatever they label it as. To me, it's the same, same, but different. Now, this is going to be the edge of the land hitting the water. I'm getting some more white on there just to get it the value I want. And my voice is going a bit Lee Marvinly now. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go this way and I'll put this in the water where I want. See, that's why I dried it. It can come in and out. Where, well, let's not kill our moon reflection. We went to a lot of trouble to get that there, so let's not kill it. Get this nice and sharp. Now, don't worry about where it's meeting the land. Um, oh, maybe I went a bit too zigzaggy. And if you see me do something in my tutorial when you're painting along and you're not happy with it, you just do yours the way you want to do it. So I'm just going to blend that up to there for now. I'm going to dry it. Now I've got to dry that, people. Oh, I suppose you were telling me we can't see. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, I'll go again. So what I've done, that brush was loaded up. And I've just virtually came across here and brushed it all in, okay? And just merging it to the mountain colour. I won't go back down to the palette. I'll dry this. All right, that's done. Now we're going to wash that brush, splish, splash, give it a bath, and then we'll pick up some of the green now. The forest green, I'm getting a bit of water with it, so we're going to get it transferring greatly. And now this is all, it's, it's like veining up the mountain. It was veining up there. Veining and up and lacing its way as high as it can go, as high as it can get all over here, because pretty much the bottom half of this is the ground colour. When it got high, the rocks took over the, the land. So we're getting this all the way, some of them shooting up than others. When I zoom back, it'll look all right. Same over here, we've got to Keep going. Uh, 
this is just the blocking stage of this green color like I'd blocked in for the mountains this is just the block in color and then this is going to merge into that sand foreshore we just put there so now in my mind I want to get this and lace it up here where it can evaporate and disappear somewhere like that now I'm going to turn the brush around and I want to get this to that shoreline flat ground area I mean this is a big area but it looks small in the painting but in real life this would be quite huge and I want to I'm just drawing the brush on my blackboard here I want to try and yeah scramble those two together like that give it a bit of just like that you'll see why now we can finish the rest of this darkness off and once again when you've done this it'll pay to dry the canvas okay so I'm going to dry that There we go, come on, get a bit dry up. <clears throat> now I've got to finish the background before I put the front trees on. Because <clears throat> there's a front row of trees there. And I don't want to try and have to paint around them. So we're grabbing that same brush again. I've washed it so as it's... And we're picking up the yellow green. I'm going to see what a bit of that does in there. Yeah. We're picking up the yellow green. Now, like I said, that forest green was a block and this is the actual color of all that. Very gingerly leave the, the shadows underneath it. And this is the color of all that land trying to get up the mountain. very gingerly it's going to be covered there don't worry about that okay start over this side gingerly nice and thin the more patience you have with your painting the more clever and smart it's going to look for the rest of its life want to get some of this just in there in the valley of these two mountains you know there's just so much you can add to this but as a tutorial I'm kind of limited to what I can do here we've got some more dark bits there they're fading keep your brush following the shape of the land okay there's a, if anything that line's coming all the way down same with this one over here came all the way down the mountain fall down the mountain and kiss the dirt there we go now we will get some of the yellow Indian yellow that's still on our palette here mix some of that with the yellow green just to give it its own highlight we could have used cad yellow but i'm going to go for the indian yellow just to see what i get out of it make some use of that paint now I'll wet it a little bit not too much though and now let's move the camera back now before i do i'll give it a see what it's going to look like that's not too bad it's it's going to highlight it so i pretty much want to highlight that now very gingerly put my coffee on a drink it oh that tasted good yeah now we'll yeah look at that very very 
gingerly, please. Follow on that ridge. This is virtually creating the, the shape, the hills and the gullies and the ditches within your land when you do this part here. Oh, my eyes just glazed over. Pick up some more, Ian. There's none on your damn brush. There we go. Okay. I suppose this is pretty much a Bob Ross style painting, isn't it, eh? But it's done in acrylic. So if we zoom back, we can kind of see what we're getting. It's not bad. It's taken a bit of time because it's live. I'm going to wash that brush. Uh, what size is the flat brush I'm using? I'm not sure. Uh, it's like a half inch. Half inch flat. Um, now, where are we? I want the, I'm gonna get the black, so I'll wet the brush a bit, so we get some transfer here. I'm just picking up the black, I'm lacing the black onto the brush there. I'm leaving the camera where it is so I don't forget to move it. Now, we want our trees, but I don't like seeing a line of trees all in a line so it looks like a fence. I like to pocket them up, break them up, and bring them up and down and bring it forward to give the painting some dimension. I think this brush might be a bit too big, but we'll see how we go. I want to put some... These are all my palm trees. They're, they're lacing in front of that land that I put there. And this will have the green on top of them, but you need the blacks first. So we're bringing some... Some up the mountain, some on top of there. But they've got to come on that island where you've created to create forward and backward distance. Okay, just like that. How's that looking? Not too bad. Okay, we'll get some up here. Some up the mountain there. These are on the mountain. I'm hoping this brush will do. We've got some coming down the mountain here. So these are pretty far away when you think of it, but they're pine trees, you know? Some here. Come on. And then we'll put the piece in front. Uh, where are we? Onto that land there, in front. Leave some pockets of field in between. But you see what I mean about not just having a flat row of trees like a fence, looking like a fence in front of your painting. Okay, that'll do. Now what I want to do is dry that. Thank you, Tabitha. So we're getting some of that there. Now that's created the depth for our trees. Dry that. Okay, it's dry. Now I'm gonna wash that brush, same brush. Whatever brush I use for the tree, I always like to use the same again to highlight it. So now we've got to create the highlights, which is, let's see. Um, I'll try yellow green first just to see what's going to happen because you know what I want to put some yellow with this because I don't want all that green being the same temperamental green that we have in front here I want it to be a different value of green and so I'm going to add some cadmium yellow light to that 
yellow green to give us a different value. It's going to give us more of a lemon. Let's see how that's going to look. And we want to leave the the darks at the bottom. So and be some of it left behind. So look at what you've done. Okay, and we had a big one up here somewhere. How's that looking in the monitor? Fine. So we're looking at what we've done. Some behind there. Do the behind ones first. Oh, they're getting a bit tall, aren't they? And you want to keep the black between the far ones and the forward ones. So something like that. So I want to look in the monitor. Are they looking like a different green? Yep. Tell you what, they don't look the best when it's zoomed right up, but I'll zoom back out to give you a better perspective of the layout. And it is what it is. If you don't like it, well, don't waste your time telling me. You've got to tell everybody that you don't like it. But it's all good. It's all good. There we go. So many of them here. I want to put some water hitting the land as well. So we'll zoom back a bit. Just to get an idea, how's it looking? Not bad. Not bad. Wash that brush. Pick up the white, which is, I'm just going to use the craft white that's left on the board there. I don't want it too white, so I'm going to put some blue with that enough to highlight it against the bank there and make sure it's opaque enough to look like water in the distance. So I like to get me stick for this that way I've got balance control hopefully. Let's hope it's a bright enough what do we got here? Yeah that'll do. So we want that just gingerly very thinly hitting against the bank over there, load your brush up, there we go, I'll just get some type of movement out there, and I want the darkest value, just a hint of black in that because where the water hits the land you need that value of darkness so you can't hardly see that light that I put there so when I get that line of dark there it's gonna bit of luck make it pop I might have to put the light back there again because this sh should have went there before so that's created the bank the bank Wash it. Picking up the lighter colour again. So there you go, watch the whole video. Put the dark bit there first. Then your light bit. Very skinny. Along here. Something like that anyway. You get the gist of it, eh? What have we got there? Okay, we're pretty much finished there. I'm gonna grab this pen of my, I love it, I love it. This is a gel pen. Let's see if it works today. Put my order. This is a neat little painting here. So I'll put my autograph on there. Whoosh. There we go. We've got Steve's little paw print down there. 
Okay. Now we're going to whack a frame on this and just see how she looks. All right, so where's my little frame? There we go, let's see. It should Landscapes usually look good in a frame. I would have liked the field behind these trees, done it brighter and put these darker trees in front, but that's okay. We can pull some of these shadows down later on if you want to fine tune it, but just for the tutorial, it's a simple, this is a small landscape of a mountain. So you can pretty much see the one that I designed on my iPad there. Where are we? Yeah, see I had a lot more dull there. I didn't get that quite in my painting, but that's okay. So I'll zoom back out so you can see it in a frame. And I've got to think of a name for this. Mountain scene, sunset mountain scene, that'll do it, simple. How many colours do you keep on hand? Um, and how long do they stay good to use? Well, I can show you there. Um, thank you very much, Angela Young. She just made a donation there on this super chat. There's all the colours. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's at least over half a dozen there. And before, I did get the water bottle and I sprayed over them like that just to keep them from skinning up. It's not a very hot day here, but if this is what you're meaning, that's how many I kept on hand. But if you, this is what you're meaning, I've got tubes of paint everywhere all over my table here. Plenty of them. All right, I'm quite happy with that. The moon turned out a bit bigger than what I wanted it to be. Um, but them's the pressures of painting in front of a camera, aren't they? All right, let me get this back here. And we'll, where are we? Where's the new Vegemite jar? There it is there. <laughs> Give you a look at the goofy Z. Hello, right, so um, Twin Peaks would be a good name. I, th I did think of that, but it's, it was like there was a TV show called Twin Peaks and I didn't want to sort of copy that. I might just call it a mountain sunset scene. So that way anyone can label it as whatever they want to label it once they've done their rendition, hey? Um, thank you for the answer, Ian. You're welcome, Karen McHenry. Uh, Lowell, paint everywhere, says Ange. Bruce Anderson, g'day Bruce, thank you for joining me today. Uh, this message is held for, how about, yeah, not to worry. Uh, I'm afraid to buy a bunch of clothes, of colors and find they don't stay good. Well, like I said, use a good quality paint and the quality of the paint makes a big difference to your work. Also the surface, practicing different surfaces. If you're using one surface and you're getting a certain look and then you change it up to a different surface such as canvas papers, canvas cloth, tooth canvas, cardboards, MDF boards, whatever, and so on. They all give you a different outcome in the look of your paint as well. Um, so over here, I get Atelier. All right, some people might say, what brand do you paint? Do you use, there it is there, I hope you can see that okay. Uh, uh, sometimes I'll use Matisse, but my favorite is the Atelier. And you know, people send me paints, here's some liquid text. We don't, I've never seen this one over here, but that was sent to me by one of my subscribers. Uh, check out the links in the description below. Like I said, there's over half a dozen there. I wish I knew what they were all about, but um, there's a donate link if you're watching the replay. There's a PayPal link, my Facebook art group page link, my music, uh, just my catalogue of just how many videos I have in my channel. And there's also a link to Reese's music. Every now and then he's uploading new music when he gets the time. And it's good music to listen to when you're actually doing a painting. All right, so we'll, we'll finish this up, all right? So if you like what I'm doing, make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya. All righty, now I'll just have to say, it's Uru from the Goo.